Have you ever heard your child's cough sound like a barking seal? Or noticed the high-pitched, raspy breathing at night? If so, you might have wondered what's going on. It's important to understand the differences between croup, RSV, and whooping cough. Do you know how to recognize the signs of more serious croup or when to seek medical help? Keep in mind that croup is contagious, so do you have a plan for illness prevention at home? And what about treatment? It can range from home remedies to medical interventions, and knowing the effectiveness and possible side effects of medications is crucial. Being prepared to manage croup at home while knowing when to visit a healthcare provider is vital for your child's comfort and safety. So, let's explore these aspects together to make sure your little one stays happy and healthy. Once upon a time in a small town, there lived a caring mother named Nina. She had a seven-month-old daughter named Lily, and like any loving parent, she was always watchful of her baby's well-being. One sunny morning, Nina noticed that something was not quite right with Lily. She had a strange, barking cough, and her breathing sounded unusual. To make matters worse, Lily had a high fever, and she was drooling more than usual. Nina couldn't help but worry, so she decided to rush her baby to the local children's clinic. Upon arriving at the clinic, Nina was understandably anxious. She had heard stories about children with asthma and was concerned that Lily might be suffering from it. When she met with the pediatrician, she immediately expressed her fears. The pediatrician, a kind and experienced professional, listened carefully to Nina's concerns. She understood that being a first-time mom can be filled with apprehension and uncertainty, and she wanted to address Nina's worries in a comforting way. The pediatrician explained, I understand your concerns about asthma, but based on Lily's symptoms, it appears to be a common condition called croup. She went on to describe that croup is a viral infection that often affects the voice box and windpipe. The barking cough, unusual breathing sounds, and increased drooling are typical signs of croup. Nina asked, Doctor, what is croup? Croup is a respiratory infection that affects young children. Viral infections are the most common cause of the condition. Croup causes swelling of your child's voice box, larynx, and windpipe, trachea. This swelling causes the airway below their vocal cords to narrow, which makes their breathing noisy and difficult. Croup in babies is most common, along with children younger than three years old. As children get older, croup isn't seen as often. This is because their windpipes get larger and swelling is less likely to get in the way of their breathing. Croup causes a distinctive cough that may sound similar to the call of a seal. The condition is usually mild, but symptoms can become severe and life-threatening. RSV versus croup, what's the difference? RSV, respiratory syncytial virus, and croup are both respiratory illnesses that can affect babies and young children. RSV is a viral infection that can affect both children and adults. It causes coughing, sneezing, and other cold-like symptoms. While RSV is its own illness, the respiratory syncytial virus is also one of the viruses that can lead to croup. Whooping cough versus croup, what's the difference? Whooping cough, pertussis, and croup are both respiratory infections that can affect babies and children. Both conditions cause a distinctive cough, although the sound of whooping cough is a more high-pitched gasping or whooping noise. Whooping cough is a bacterial infection whereas a viral infection usually causes croup. Therefore, no vaccines can prevent croup and antibiotics can't treat it. Doctor, how common is croup? It's more common in boys and children than girls. Healthcare providers define about 85% of croup cases as mild. They consider less than 1% of cases severe. Doctor, what does croup sound like? The croup cough sounds like a harsh barking sound. This is the most common symptom of croup. Your child may also have strider, which is a raspy, vibrating sound that occurs when your child is breathing in. Doctor, what are the other symptoms of croup? Croup is typically mild and lasts less than one week, but symptoms can get more severe. Symptoms normally start slowly and may begin with a runny or stuffy nose. Over the next 12 to 48 hours, symptoms can worsen and the barking cough may start. Symptoms are usually worse at night. 
Other mild croup symptoms include hoarseness, fever, rash, eye redness, conjunctivitis, and swollen lymph nodes. Symptoms of moderate to severe croup may include difficulty breathing, restlessness or nervousness, and cyanosis, blue-tinged skin. Mina asked, Doctor, what causes croup? The most common cause of croup is a viral infection. Viral croup causes your child's upper airways to swell, making it difficult for them to breathe. However, these viruses are common and most children with viral infections don't develop croup. Rarely, bacteria can complicate the viral infection and make it more difficult to breathe. Doctor, is croup contagious? Yes, croup is highly contagious because the viruses that lead to the condition are easily spreadable. Doctor, how does she get croup? The viruses that cause croup spread easily through the air. When someone with a viral or bacterial infection that can cause croup sneezes or coughs, they send respiratory droplets containing croup-causing germs into the air. When your child breathes in these droplets, they can catch an illness that'll cause croup. Your child can also get croup by touching objects contaminated by germs that can cause croup. Doctor, how long is croup contagious? Your child is contagious for three days after their symptoms first appeared or until their fever is gone. You should keep your child home from school until 24 hours have passed without a fever and without using fever-reducing medication. Doctor, are there any complications of croup? Most cases of croup are mild and you can treat them at home. Complications of croup are rare. Less than 5% of children with croup need in-hospital care. Your child's condition may lead to hospitalization if they need oxygen therapy to keep their oxygen levels within a safe range, have severe dehydration that requires four fluids, need multiple doses of inhaled breathing treatments to provide relief, or have severe symptoms despite initial treatment. Doctor, how can I tell if my child has croup? You can usually tell if your child has croup based on their signs and symptoms. The most common symptoms are a barking cough and strider. This condition is especially widespread in the fall and winter months. If your child's condition is severe, a healthcare provider may order x-rays and laboratory tests, but this is rare. How is croup treated? Croup treatment depends on the severity of your child's condition and the risk of it rapidly worsening. If your child has a history of respiratory problems or was born prematurely, that may also affect the treatment approach. Mild croup, you can usually treat mild croup at home. Home treatment includes using a cool mist humidifier to help soothe dry and irritated airways. You can also sit with your child in a bathroom filled with steam generated from hot water running in the shower. Treating your child's fever with an over-the-counter medication such as paracetamol or ibuprofen. Treating your child's cough with warm, clear fluids to help loosen the mucus on their vocal cords. Avoiding smoking in your home, as smoke can worsen your child's cough. Keeping your child's head elevated with an extra pillow. Don't use pillows with infants younger than 12 months old. You may wish to sleep in the same room as your child so you're there if they start to have trouble breathing. For moderate to severe croup, you should take your child to the nearest urgent care center or emergency room. Severe croup can be life-threatening, and you shouldn't delay taking your child in. Treatment for moderate to severe croup will vary based on your child's symptoms. Croup treatments may include humidified air or oxygen, for fluids for dehydration, and monitoring of vital signs, including oxygen levels, breathing, and heart rate. Croup medication, including steroids and nebulized breathing treatments. Glucocorticoids are a type of steroid that decreases the swelling of your child's voice box, larynx, typically within six hours of the first dose. For a child with mild croup, glucocorticoids may reduce the need for a repeat visit. Your child will receive epinephrine as an inhaled mist, nebulizer. This also reduces the swelling in your child's airways and usually starts working within 10 minutes. Epinephrine works for two hours or less, and your child may receive this treatment every 15 to 20 minutes for severe symptoms. Serious side effects of epinephrine are rare. However, side effects could include a rapid heartbeat or palpitation. A healthcare provider will monitor your child for three to four hours after their last dose to ensure symptoms of airway Soon blockage after treatment don't will return. my child feel better. Glucocorticoids usually start working within six hours of the first dose. 
epinephrine typically begins working faster than glucocorticoids. Doctor, how can the spread of croup be prevented? Croup can spread by physical contact or through the air. To help prevent its spread, wash and dry your hands thoroughly after caring for your child. Wash toys between each use. Encourage your child to cover their mouth and nose when coughing and sneezing. Keep your child home from school or daycare when they're ill or if outbreaks occur. Doctor, when should I worry about croup? Croup can be mild, moderate, or severe, depending on how difficult it is for your child to pull air into their lungs. The size of their windpipe and the amount of narrowing due to the swelling determine the severity of your child's condition. In addition, your child's condition may become more severe if they become upset. A child with mild croup may have a barking cough and strider. Symptoms can worsen throughout your child's illness, especially during the evening hours. So it's important to keep an eye on their breathing, but you can usually treat their condition at home. A child with moderate croup may have strider along with retractions, sucking in the skin around their ribs and the top of their breastbone. They may also be slightly agitated or disoriented and may have moderate trouble breathing. You should take your child to see a healthcare provider for treatment. A child with severe croup has strider and retractions. They may also be agitated, anxious or fatigued. Cyanosis, blue-tinged skin, is common. Severe croup is a life-threatening condition. Take your child to the emergency room immediately. Nina felt a sense of relief as the pediatrician's words eased her concerns. She was grateful for the doctor's empathy and knowledge, which helped her understand the situation better. The pediatrician then provided clear instructions on how to care for Lily while she recovered from croup and stressed the importance of monitoring her symptoms and seeking medical help if needed. As the days went by and with the doctor's guidance, Lily gradually recovered from croup. Nina, now more confident in her role as a mother, learned an important lesson that day. It's perfectly normal to have concerns and questions as a parent, and healthcare professionals are there to address them with care and expertise. Nina and Lily continued their journey of motherhood, facing each challenge with greater confidence and knowing that they could always rely on the support and knowledge of healthcare providers whenever they needed it. Thank you for embarking on this important journey with us to learn about croup and how to ensure your child's health. We've covered a lot of valuable information today, and we're committed to providing you with even more essential parenting tips and health advice. By subscribing, you'll be the first to know when we release new content, so you can stay informed and well-prepared. Your child's well-being is our top priority, and together, we can navigate the path of parenthood with confidence. So, please, take a moment to click that subscribe button, and let's continue this adventure together. Don't miss out on the knowledge that could make a real difference for your family.